Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'll lead you step by step through each of the ABRSM Theory grades. We're cracking on through ABRSM Music Theory Grade 3, so if you grab your Theory and Practice Workbook, we'll be pressing on with that. Um, there's lots of resources available to help you on my website too if you visit SharonBill.com. You can find some free PDF information sheets. They're available in US Letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. So I make frequent reference to this. There's lots of information in here to help you. Also, there's um, a page which links to my YouTube video tutorials on that website. And you can also access information about the books that I have available. If it is that you're working towards taking this exam, I've written a book, How to Take Your ABRSM Music Theory Exam, and it's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam, and also how to best make use of the time once you're actually sitting in the exam room. So there's lots of help available on my website, so if you go to SharonBill.com, it's all there. If you can give me a like, that'd be great, and subscribe to keep updated. I absolutely love working through music theory, and I hope that you're enjoying this too. I hope it's helpful to you. And so now, let's crack on. And so we're moving to page 21, which I've referred to as section G. And so you can turn to your PDF documents and turn to section G and there's a little bit of information there that I've condensed for you. Now in your workbook there's lots and lots of information so do take the time to read through this information on page 21 uh, it's really, really important information that you need to know to consolidate all that we've done so far on notes and rests in compound time. I've consolidated those for you in little sentences, just the general points to remember in the PDF document. I think the most important thing to sort of catch hold of is we're always grouping things in threes because we're in compound time. And so everything we do, whether we're beaming or whether we're adding rests, we're always grouping things in threes to show that compound time. I think the couple of things to note in exception to that, or in addition to that really, are um, in 12.8 we're in quadruple time. And so just like when we were in 4.4, you don't have um, a dotted minim rest going over the middle part of the bar. And so you wouldn't beam over that middle part of the bar. So that's the same. It's also worth noting that in compound time signatures, whatever the time signature, if it's a complete bar's rest, it's still just a semi brief or a whole note rest without a dot. That is still just the simple shorthand for a complete full bars rest. The only other thing that I think is worthy of special notice is when you're grouping rests, there's your group of three. Similarly, there's your group of three. If you notice, when the rests come afterwards, so you've got one quaver beat or one eighth note, and then we've got the other two as rests. They go as quaver rests or eighth note rests. However, when it comes before, the two can be grouped as a crotchet or a quarter note rest. So that's just kind of a little idiosyncrasy that you just perhaps need to be aware of. Other than that, once you've had a little read through of this, I don't think you properly internalise how to apply this just by reading it on the page. So I, I think once you've had a quick look through this and just looked at the main points in the PDF document, I suggest that you just press on and turn over and just you will learn by your mistakes by putting it into practice. So moving on to page 22, ordinarily I would say press pause and then re-access into the video when you've completed the whole exercise. However, you may want to just access this one little test at a time. So once you've completed 1A, 
come back and then you will have learned a little bit from your mistakes and then you will be able to put that new knowledge into practice with 1B. And then when you've tried that one and figured out perhaps where you could have done something better, you will learn that by 1C and by the end of the page, one at a time. So don't just perhaps charge through, unless you're feeling really, really confident. Maybe take it one at a time and keep coming back into the video on a regular basis. It's always better to learn by your mistakes. It doesn't matter if you go wrong, we're only ever writing in pencil. If you've got your traditional pencil, make sure it's really sharp. Remember, in the exam it says marks may be lost if your answers aren't neat and tidy. You will need your ruler and I can pretty much guarantee that you will need an eraser but that's okay, that means we can just rub it all out and try again. So putting into practice all of the rules that we've learned about grouping in compound time and also looking at rests, as I've said before the main principle and it's a very simple bullet point is just to remember to group things in threes and so that will be reflected in your beams and also in your rests and so if you notice you will have to use ties on occasion <clears throat> and this is the bar that's most worthy of notice because here at the moment that's in twos we've got two quavers or eighth notes there two quavers or eighth notes there and so to show the group of three we're going to have to divide this between the two groups and you can see now we've got one two three tied to one two three I think that's perhaps the most obvious point that just takes a little bit of sinking in so we have to sometimes split a note to divide it between the groups of three and the same would be true of rests so maybe have a little go just jump straight in have a go at one a and then when you've just had a go, just kind of commit yourself to it and go at it. And then we'll go through it together and we'll sort of learn as we go along. It's better to just try and learn on the hoof rather than try and internalise a lot of little facts. And then it'll just sort of um, fall out of your mind. That's the way I work anyway. So I shall leave you to it and then come back into the video in a second. So I'm hoping that you've been brave and had a go at exercise 1A. So let's do all of the bits and bobs that don't require too much attention first. Let's warm into this gently. So we want our clef, key signature, time signature. So we're in 9-8 which is three groups of three. So what we always need to be reflecting is this in the way that we group things and so automatically this first two will stay undisturbed but this one just like in the example is going to need to be split between the two groups because we need a one two three and then a one two three and so we're going to have to use a tie and so we've got eighth note rest eighth note and then that will be tied to another eighth note or quaver so there we can see there's our first group of three. Oh, that's gone very wonky I'm too busy thinking about grouping and not thinking about placement let's just nudge that up a little bit that's better So now we have B sharp C, there's our next group of three. Notice that it's okay to have a rest in the middle of the beam. And then finishing with a crotchet or a quarter note, nothing needs changing there. We can't change the way this sounds, it's got to remain sounding exactly the same. But there we've definitely got three groups of three. And we're going to have exactly the same problem in this next bar. So we've got the C rest C tied to another C. B sharp C, that's exactly the same. 
and then B natural, G. Oh, that's an eighth note, there's our quarter note, so there's quaver crotchet. So that there is now complete. So you'll see how you'll soon get the hang of it once you've sort of had a little go. So now have a go at exercise B and see how you go with that one. So I'm hoping that you've had a little go, so let's now work through this together. Bit by bit you'll get the hang of it. So, oops, some bolts, clef, key signature, our time signature is 6-8, <coughs> excuse me. And so we're reflecting two groups of three now in this new exercise. Now the start of it, the anacrusis, the upbeat, we can't do anything about. <clears throat> and so here we've got one and a half, two, three quavers or eighth notes. So they would go together, one and a half, two, three, they will go together. I always find it better doing the group first and then adding all the bits and bobs afterwards. So that one's dotted with a semi-quaver or a sixteenth note and then the same principle again you may want to use a ruler <clears throat> I'm just trying to be quick there we go so that's that we can very easily see our two groups of three one two three that's nice and straightforward it's always nice when you get an easy bit one, two, three, we can't change the note value, so they just stay. Because if you beam that, you'll have changed the note value of the crotchet or the quarter note. Here we go, this one's pretty straightforward. One, two, three, one, two, three. So the beaming's straightforward. We've just got a bit of deciding to do about which way the stems go on the second group. So here we've got the A which is one below the middle line, the deciding point. The D is three above the deciding middle line and then the F is four below. So this one kind of overrules. This one's close enough to go either way and this one's only three, this one's four steps away so that kind of wins the vote. So we'll just slant that down a little bit to show. <clears throat> one, two, three. Now this bar isn't complete, that's why it says etc. So we can't put a bar line at the end. It hasn't quite finished. There we go. So I hope you're getting the hang of that. So now press pause, have a go at exercise C and see how you go. Oh, pardon the pun, C. Deary me, that was bad. So I'm hoping that you've had a little go at this on your, on your own. Take your time. Don't rush, it's just better to have a go and learn as you go along. Any mistakes, anything drastically wrong, it doesn't matter. You can erase it and try again. So our key signature now is 12 8, so we're in quadruple compound time. And that should always be reflected in our groupings. So one, two, three, they belong together, but nothing needs adding so we've got a crotchet and a quaver or a quarter note eighth note okay so one two three they will belong together so we can beam those one two three nothing needs changing they just stay as they are and that leaves us with one, two, three, nicely at the end. If you know, if something isn't working out at the end, something's gone a little bit awry previously in the bar. Okay, one, two, three, that's our first little group. Nothing needs changing there, just copy that. One, two, three, nothing needs changing there. Now we're going to have to do a little bit of thinking here. One, two, three, that is kind of okay, but it would be much simpler to just add a dot. One, two, three, so we've kind of got rid of the need for that and added a dot. E, 
is on its own. Now, if you remember the previous rule, it's okay to put a crotchet or a quarter note rest and then the note. However, when it comes after a half beat, we have to show that. That's one of those little um, idiosyncrasies we need to peep for. Okay, next one. This one looks like it's going to need a bit of thinking of straight away. So just have a think in that first bar. Remember, we've got to reflect that. So press pause, have a go, and then we'll come at it together. So I'm hoping that you've had a crack at this yourself. The more you do, the easier it gets. Treble clef, 9-8. So we're reflecting three groups of three. So if that won't do, that's simple time, that's grouped in twos. And so first of all, we're going to know that we need that tied to something. So we've got left. So, so far we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we need it tied to two quaver beats worth, which is a crotchet or a quarter note. And then, if we just add the last, we can see there's our other group of three. So we've got one, two groups of three there, and there's our next group of three. So we're going to have to do a similar thing here and subdivide this so we make sure that we've got the correct note value but grouped in threes. So we know that we can begin with a dotted minim or a dotted half note. So that's worth six quaver beats and here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven quaver beats and so we're going to have to tie it to the remaining quaver beat. And then that makes sense because there's now our group of three. Okie dokie, so that's okay. Looks like this bar doesn't need changing at all. Oops. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now here, this looks unnecessarily complicated. We've got ties where we don't need them. So that and that can become that, which is then tied to this remaining half a beat, um, quaver beat, or eighth note. And then remembering that little rule we did before, we need to just change that when it comes after in the second two beats of the group. And that's that. So the last one, hopefully you can now feel a little bit more confident at having a go at it. So press pause, have a go, and then we'll check through it together. So I'm hoping that you've had a little go of that yourself. B flats, E flats, A flats. So we're in 12 8, so we're in quadruple time, so we need to be reflecting four dotted crotchets. A group of three is shown there, so we've got four groups of three. And so here we go. So our first note is just one quaver or one eighth note, and we need to complete that group two, three, and so we've got another, or the rest of the bar now needs to be allocated to rests. Let's just jump to the second half of the bar. We know that the second half of the bar can be shown as a dotted minim. So there's our one group of three, two groups of three, three groups of three, so we've got one group of three left which is shown as that, because remember we don't beam over or have a rest hanging over the middle part. We have to keep the two halves of the bar separate. I would imagine that the reason for that rule is just because it's such a very, very long bar, we need to clearly see each half of the bar. Okay, so let's carry on. Again, we've got this problem where that's grouped in simple time or 
tie reflect simple time and so now we can't use a dotted minim or a dotted half note because that value would be too long so we're going to have to start with a dotted crotchet or a dotted quarter note. So there's our first group of three. Now that in itself is worth one, two, three, four quaver beats or four eighth notes plus this one which makes five. At the moment we've got one, two, three and so we need to tie it to complete the note value to that. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five quaver beats but now properly grouped. So there's our first group of three and so this next note completes our second group of three and needs to be on its own and now we should have one, two, three, one, two, three and that's correct. So we just need to beam those in threes and that is now much more obviously in compound time because ultimately somebody is going to have to play these and they need to see where each new beat falls that can be left as it is and we'll put etc to show that we know it's not the end of the bar there we go then I do hope that's been helpful for helpful to you I do know that it's quite a tricky subject but hopefully bit by bit you'll get there if you find that really difficult just go back and go through it again if you can give me a like that'd be fab i hope you've enjoyed this i'm certainly enjoying it subscribe to my channel so you keep updated that would be great and please do go to sharonbill.com there's lots of resource to help you so do make use of that to help you thanks again for watching i'll see you next time bye